Good evening, everyone. Two astounding things have happened in China in the past four decades. First, they went from an atheist country to the largest Christian country in the world, and one that is now sending thousands of missionaries out. They also went from a completely undeveloped third world country to the biggest economy on the planet, and one that is now sending trillions of dollars in loans and investments to Latin America, Africa, and Asia. This is Kevin Walmsley, and we are inside China business. That verse that I just shared on the screen, it comes from the Bible. And that's something we used to believe in once. We used to believe that the spiritual vitality of a country could be reflected in the finances. We once were proud to call ourselves, the United States, a Christian country. And once upon a time, we are also the biggest creditor country in the whole world. Now we are not a Christian country. We go out of our way to say so. And now we have to borrow money to do anything. In 1990, there were fewer than 1 million Christians here in China, less than 1% of the population. Also in 1990, the China economy accounted for less than 1% of all the economic activity in the world. What has happened since 1990, there's, there's no word for it. The number of Christians in China went from 1 million to 100 million in just 15 years, and it's just kept growing. That had never happened before at any time or any place in the history of the world. And the economy of China went from less than 1% to the second biggest economy in the world in about the same time. If you put a chart of the growth of the Christian church in China and a chart of the economic growth in China in just 30 years, it's the same chart. It's two charts that start at zero and then go up in a straight line. A parabolic curve, basically. The economic growth that we've seen here was impossible. It's absolutely impossible. And everybody's been trying to make sense of it. How did it happen and why? And all the analysts and all the experts have been wrong. All the economists and all the investment banks and all the professors and all the universities. They were looking for some cause and effect relationship that could explain it all. And somehow they missed the biggest story in the history of the whole world. There is not a lot of media coverage or news about what goes on inside these Chinese house churches who are driving all the growth of the Christian faith here in China. But I know what's going on. So I can share what I know about the people who are inside these Chinese Christian house churches. They love their country. They love China, and every time they meet, they thank God that they're Chinese. They pray for the country, and they pray for the leaders of the country. They do this every single time. They also believe that the economic prosperity that they now enjoy, that it needs to be shared. There are still many poor people here in China, and they believe that they are responsible for helping them. 
They also believe that they are supposed to share their prosperity and their wealth with other people in the world. China is a very nice country now in most places. Nice homes, nice cars, nice restaurants, nice clothes. But they believe that they are supposed to go. They're supposed to go and help other countries develop. So they raise money and they start businesses and they send their money and they send themselves and they go. And they believe that when they go, that God is going to bless them and protect them. And he's gonna prosper their businesses there so they can grow even more and invest even more and send even more. So that is a brief description of what's happening in millions of home churches in this country and for tens of millions of Christians who are praying for those things, believing for those things, and acting so that those things come about. The first article that I'm going to share is from the Global Times. The Global Times is an official publication of the China government. And so when you're reading it, you're welcome to imagine that an official from the China government is sitting there right next to you reading it aloud. And it's also written in English. So this is information that they want us to know. There are experts, they're all over YouTube, they're all over the TV, and they're all predicting the end of China. The economic collapse of China is just around the corner, I hear. I've been hearing it for a while. And they do have some history on their side. China has a communist government, after all, and how many of those are still around? The Soviet Union is gone. The satellite allies they had in the Central Asia and Eastern Europe, those are all gone. Cuba, Laos, Vietnam, North Korea, they all add up to zero. So what makes China different from all of them? At just about the same time that Western countries, the United States, Western Europe, turned away from God and faith, that's when the Chinese found them. And for the consequences of all that, just look around. We cannot beat these people. They cannot be beaten, not in a trade war, not in an economic war, not in a war of any kind. And this is why. Thanks for watching. Be good.